What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, which was actually a few days ago, I wasn't super energetic, I wasn't really feeling it, so I took a few days off from recording, tended to some real life stuff, which admittedly wasn't too refreshing, but it is necessary to do. And now I'm kind of getting ready to get back, so given it's been a few days, please be patient with me and forgive me if I don't remember everything as well as I did, well yesterday's episode uh, from your guys perspective uh, not that you guys are generally very harsh in fact I'm actually quite proud most of my comment sections on YouTube across all the series I do on my channel are really nice really supportive and really informative and really add to the experience unlike the the stereotypical oh, not that YouTube section where things can get pretty bad so anyways um, one of the things we were thinking about though was how do we stop Phi and I thought we might use some Soparil beta, like that seemed reasonable, but I'm really not sure exactly how we've unlocked the necessary information to stop her, but I guess there's only one way to find out, right? <laughs> Luna and I stepped out of our AB room a little later than the others. They were already gathered in front of the projection awaiting the announcement of the results. You chose ally, right? Okay, so this is where... That's right, this is where we choose ally, Phi chooses betray, and then she jumps over us. <laughs> Are you sure that was okay? Yeah, of course. Phi did too. That's right, she's like... Oh, wow, so there's not a lot to skip, I guess. Oh, I already know. What? Uh, let's just go have a look, shall we? We'll know pretty quick whether I knew anything or not. Okay. Let's go. So this is where we choose ally, she chooses betray, she was like, I'm gonna make you pay, and all that jazz, right? Alright, so here are the results. Treated to some lovely art. And I think everybody else allies, correct? Okay, to be expected. Points have been assigned, and then we check our bracelets. What the heck, Fi? Why'd you choose Betray? You chose Ally before. I see. So you remember it too. That's right, we were thinking that Fi is also experiencing this weirdness with other timelines, right? The other round too. What? Yeah, that's exactly it. That wasn't even close to the response I'd expected. It felt anticlimactic? Hey, hold on a minute here. You... you know? You remember how I chose Betray last time in round two? Yeah, of course. Why do you think I chose Betray this time? Don't you remember what I said? That I'd make you pay? Yeah, so it's pretty clear at this point, both Sigma and Phi are experiencing the alternate timelines. Yeah, I do remember that. Then, this is you making me pay? Yes. Wait. Wait! No, 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 that didn't make any sense. Something wasn't right. How could we both know about an earlier round two? How could there have been an earlier round two? Was it some sort of alternate history? I mean, we already talked about this in a previous episode, right? That there are these alternate timelines that are arguably all going on at once, although from our perspective we're experiencing them in a particular order, and this particular Sigma at least, and Phi is probably experiencing them in a different order. What the heck was I thinking? That was conspiracy theory stuff. Even if there was some sort of alternate timeline or universe or whatever, there was no way I could know what I what had happened in it. No way I could know. Well, clearly Sigma hasn't played 999 and isn't aware of something called the morphogenetic field, but at least I didn't think there was any way I could know. But if I could, then how? I remembered Phi choosing ally, then scowling at me when I broke my promise and swearing revenge. That was not a smart move, Sigma. 
I won't forget this. I'll make sure you pay, even if it's the last thing I do. And this is also, I don't know, it's all kind of coming full circle, right? We had hints of Fi also experiencing these alternate timelines literally in the very first moments of the game. For example, her knowing that, well, our name is Sigma without ever potentially having any contact prior to the Nonary game. Why did I know that? Perhaps more importantly, why did Fi remember it? What the heck did any of this mean? It had happened before, hadn't it? During round one of the AB game when I was playing against Alice, I'd seen something. That's right, Fi and I had chosen Betray. But for some reason I'd seen a reality where we'd chosen Ally instead. Suddenly I realized that I wasn't alone. I looked up to see Luna, Clover, and Kay, who were probably wondering just what's going on. They all began to speak at once. What happened? Why did you choose Betray, Fi? Yeah. You're the only one who didn't vote ally. I honestly feel like Glover's model only looks reasonable when she has that sort of straight-faced or borderline frown. Fi looked away and scowled. For several long moments, her eyes stared off into the distance, and I could also see her mind working. Finally, she sighed and spoke. Right. Well, I've got nine points now. <laughs> anyway, deflection. So, sorry, but I'm out of here. Huh? What do you mean? Do I really have to explain it? I'm leaving, through the number nine door. Hey, wait. Okay, so this is probably the usual, right? Yeah. So we try to stop her. Fi leaps. Who knows why she can jump that high? <laughs> I felt myself speaking before I even knew what the words were. So this is Fi. So this is supposedly our attempt to stop Fi that's going to be new from what we learned in another timeline. It loves some semel. Oh, it's the, um, it's the Jupiter one. Not even Jupiter can find a lost opportunity. It's kind of an odd thing to say, but I guess... I mean, whoa, so actually, now that I think about this phrase again, there's a lot to say here, right? If you say something like this, one, you're making a superficial argument, hey, Fi, there is an opportunity to have everybody else leave, not just you, and if you were to leave now, that would be a lost opportunity that you can't come back to, not even Jupiter, right? There's also the layer of, well, there's this whole mystery, right? Who's planning the bombs? What's going on here? Why are we experiencing these alternate timelines? And if you exit now and we all die, that's going to completely destroy that and we're losing that opportunity. But then what's also even weirder, there's an even deeper layer that almost undercuts those first two layers in that, well, Phi and Sigma are doing exactly what Jupiter couldn't, right? In that... They are going back to lost opportunities. They are able to somehow experience these other timelines, rework decisions they had made differently in the past. Past, in quotes. And so, that's actually an incredibly loaded phrase now that I think about it. Are you sure this is how you want it to end? What about the Nonary game? Zero. The bombs. We still don't know the truth about any of it. If you leave now, we never will. Is that really what you want? <laughs> A lot of silence. Fine. Wow, so I guess that was compelling enough. If I slowly let go of the lever, I also... I don't remember, did we say that or hear that in this timeline? Because we heard it from Fi herself in another timeline, I believe. That might add some weirdness to it in and of itself. If I slowly let go of the lever. Whew. Look, I'm sorry about betraying you. I'm honestly not sure why I did it. Forget about it. This time you chose ally, and I chose betray. I think we're even. Ah, uh, breaking the cycle. 
Uh, what are you two talking about? Yeah, I'm curious, why is it only Phi and Sigma who are experiencing this phenomenon? Or if others are, why are they fading that they're not? When did you betray her? Are you talking about round one? No. We aren't talking about round one, we're... Just drop it. There's no point. I doubt they'd understand even if you did tell them. Yeah, you're right. Oops, one second. A lot of question marks going around. I don't get it. Well, at least it seems Fi has decided to remain. You've really changed your mind? Yeah. I'll stick around a little longer. Like he said, I can't leave until we figure out what's going on. The AB game will continue until someone opens the number 9 door. Someone reaches 9BP and doesn't open the door, the game will keep going. Smiles all around. Oh man. That's a relief. Please don't scare us like that again. The Ambidex gates have closed. Oh, so this is different, actually. I thought we already heard this explanation about the star keys. Hmm. Yeah, there's no time limit on how much you, or how many times you can use the star keys, etc. As many times as we want, huh? Then that means... As long as you have the star keys, you can play the AB game as many times as you want. You probably won't be allowed to play continuously, however. There's a period of time between when the doors open and when the polling ends. Based off the last two rounds, I think it's about 45 minutes long. So you can repeat the game once every 45 minutes or so. Sounds about right. Oh, that's right. What? <laughs> Didn't Zero Jr. say something about that? As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up, as well as the paired and solo assignments. Oh yeah, what are your bracelets, guys? Looks like I'm... a red solo. Oh, interesting. Sigma's a solo here. Luna's a magenta pair? Oh, and so is Clover. That means we'll be a team this time. I think we'll do great. Yeah. Who's going to be my partner then? Interesting, so she's got a blue or cyan. I'm a cyan pair. They do not appear to be here. I, for instance, am a yellow pair. Huh? Wait a second. If Luna and Clover are a magenta pair, Phi is a cyan pair, and K is a yellow pair, who the heck am I supposed to partner up with? The cyan pair, I imagine. Phi and her mysterious partner. How do you figure that? Sigma, what colors are added together to create cyan? Uh, green and blue, right? What color would you get by adding your red to that? Red, green, and blue would be white. Exactly. So you're saying the next set of chromatic doors are going to be white? Yes. How do you know? Because I've seen them. I'm surprised Phi doesn't know from, you know, alternate timelines or anything like that. 
After leaving the archives, we found a warehouse very similar to this one. In it was a set of white doors. Well, to be precise, a set of doors which radiated white light. Yeah, I saw him too. After we were finished in the garden, we went to the same warehouse he's talking about. They have the same little lock thingies. I'm 100% sure they're the next chromatic doors. What about the people back in the infirmary? Yeah, we left Dio with them. That's never a good setup. <laughs> do they know about the white doors? Although, we do know, right, from that, uh, from that other timeline, that Temuji can hold his own against Dio. Yes. If we exclude Quark from their number, then I believe they do. I wonder what colors they are. As far as pairs go, I mean, it's probably what? Gonna be a green solo, a blue solo, and... Phi's cyan partner and K's yellow partner? Yeah, we're missing a cyan and a yellow. If Sigma's a red solo, then we should have a green solo and a blue solo back in the infirmary. Hmm. Well, I'm going back to the infirmary. I'm kind of worried about Alice and Quark. I'll go too. As will I. Oh, that's right. Wait, guys. There's something I need to tell you. Huh? What is it? Yeah, what, what do you tell, have to tell them so bad, Sigma? Go on. I meant to say something earlier, but I guess there was just so much other stuff going on. I looked at Phi. She nodded back. See, the truth is... To be continued. Oh, no, I guess not. What? Oh no. You found another bomb? Yeah. Where? In the garden. No. That's not possible. We didn't see anything like that. Could you have missed it? No. No way. We checked every part of that room. Hmm. There was a number on this one, too. It said 01. Since the one we found in the crew quarters said 03 on it, well... You think there might be a third bomb out there somewhere? I think there's a good chance. Very well. We should split up and find this other bomb. It could be anywhere. Yeah, I agree. But even if we do find it, what are we supposed to do? That is a concern for later. I guess, yeah, what, what would you do? Honestly, at this point, I'd almost be tempted to set up a trap of some sort. Where... Where you try to bait a reaction out of the person who did set the bomb. For example... Let's say we announce to the rest of the crew that there's a bomb in the garden. And when we tell the crew, we could say, oh, I mean, we can observe people and uh, and so forth. But then we could say an extra fact of like, oh, 
we saw it there, and then when we went to when I went to show Luna and Kay, it was gone. Now the person who placed the bomb probably expects it to stay there, and if it were gone, would be probably pretty upset and surprised. And they may react to that news differently than the rest of their peers. And so you could try to bait that reaction and read into that to see who might be more likely to have been somebody who knew at least knew at least more than everybody else about the bomb. Maybe something like that. I mean, that's far from concrete, though. At the moment, our primary concern should be finding it. Can't find an enemy you can't see, after all. Precisely. Alright, I'll head back to the infirmary and let everybody else know. Please. How about we set a time to meet back here, just in case? The time we have left until the chromatic doors open is... let's see... How much time we got? Almost a couple hours. Quite a bit, actually. One hour and 57 minutes. I think approximately half of that should be enough. When we have one hour remaining, we should meet back at the infirmary. Acceptable? That sounds good to me. Right. I'll tell the others, too. Ah, oh, I want to see what's going on in the infirmary. Good. Let's go. So where are we gonna go? Yeah, I want to visit the infirmary. I feel like that would be the most exciting to see. See how everybody else reacts to the news of the bomb, right? But it looks like we're going down to floor B. Let's see, where are we going on floor B? The warehouse. Oh, so are we finally going to get an opportunity to explore this warehouse? Kind of looks like it. So these are the white doors that Kay and Clover were talking about. Yeah, there's the lock thing. No question these are chromatic doors, I guess. So it seems. <laughs> when did you get here, Fi? Ah! What? When did you... I've been here the whole time. Seriously? I didn't notice you at all. Oh. I guess your hearing's starting to go. How sad. <laughs> Love the, the playful jest. So, what do you want? Why are you stalking me? Not stalking you. I just followed you here. That's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, there's a bit of a nuance, but... But, but how did you do it? You were totally silent. Are you Batman? I already told you I'm not. Remember? Back in the AB room when we met? Did, did we really have a conversation about Batman? Yeah, actually. You also jumped super high, all the way up to the ceiling. <laughs> right, aren't you curious about that graffiti? As the text was kind of scrolling in, I thought she was going to say, right, aren't you curious about that? And then we'd get a little bit of an explanation about that jump. But now, instead, it seems like we're going to get some nice deflection. Graffiti? Oh, yeah, that. Memento Mori, if the ninth line eat the sun. Did a kid write that, or what? Why do you say that? Well, they managed to spell ninth wrong. Who puts an E in there? Somebody who intentionally wants that E, I guess? You're right. Then again, maybe it means something. Hmm. Do you know what it means? 
The Latin part? Hey now, give me a little credit. Even I know what memento mori means. You see it all over the place. As far as I know, it translates to something like, be aware of death, or remember your mortality. Never forget that we all die someday. I guess it's a sort of cautionary thing. I don't really see it that frequently. What actually comes to mind most prominently for the phrase Memento Mori is from an anime that I actually enjoyed quite a bit called uh, Death Parade. Or Death Parade. I don't know if any of you have seen it before. If you have, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. But if you haven't, it's a it's a fun little but deep and I think pretty insightful uh, short anime that that's a good time. Highly recommend it. <laughs> what about the other part? It's exactly what it says on the tin, right? Some sort of conditional about lions and sons. Hmm. Anything come to mind? No, nothing. Nothing at all. Even fine. What about you? Me? Huh? Well, let's see. Memento Mori if the ninth lion ate the sun. Memento Mori if the ninth lion ate the sun. I repeated the words over and over in my head, but nothing. Whatever they meant, it was beyond me. But perhaps Phi. Latin. Huh? Don't you know Latin? Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe if the second half, that conditional, were translated to Latin, if that would be, if that would, I don't know, elicit some sort of extra meaning. Maybe you can figure more of it out. Well, I know a little. More than most people, I guess. But I'm not an expert. Then how'd you know that phrase? The Jupiter one. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it. Oh, that. That's from, um, this. She unpinned the... Now that I think about it, I don't think I ever really say this word. I only hear Japanese people say it as brooch, but is it pronounced brooch? That's how that's how I mean it's spelled, but interesting. Uh, from her chest as she spoke and held it out to me. I hesitated for a moment, then took it out. Then took it. Look at the back. I turned it over. There it is. The Jupiter phrase. What is this though? So I guess the I is pronounced like a J in Latin, huh? Is that... I wonder if that'll be pertinent to other clues we get. Yeah. What is this? A memento of my late mother. Well, I guess it's something like a memento. What does that mean? She died right after I was born. I was raised by foster parents and they told me where the brooch, brooch had come from. Apparently it was the only thing my mother had left behind. What about your father? Don't have one. I guess you could say I was an orphan? Never saw his face and don't know his name. I don't even know if he's alive. Oh. I couldn't think of anything else to say, so I just handed her back the brooch. Brooch. <laughs> that phrase got to be almost like a prayer for me. Whenever I had to make a tough decision, I'd say it to myself. Sometimes I just repeat it over and over like a chant. Before long, I had it memorized. It got me interested in Latin and I started studying the language. Not even Jupiter can find a lost opportunity. Sounds nice, doesn't it? But... It seems kind of funny now. Oh, is she going to comment on, on what I mentioned earlier? I mean, look at us. We've done what Jupiter can't. 
一度過ぎ去ってしまった機会を取り戻すことができるんだから。We can find our lost opportunities. それがお前を追ってきた理由だ。That's why I followed you here. この件について一度じっくりと二人で話し合った方がいいとそう思ってな。I thought it would be a good idea to talk to you about all this alone. Yeah, that's not a bad plan. <laughs> I agree. とはいえ、我々には他にもやらなければならないことがある。There is something else we need to do too, though. Find the number two bomb. Exactly. というわけでシグマ、移動しよう。So, we should get going. この倉庫に爆弾はなさそうだ。I'm pretty sure the bomb isn't in here. そうなところも見当たらない。There's nowhere to hide it. だから。So, you're saying we should go somewhere else? Yeah. ほら、何をポケットしてる Oh, come on, don't just stand there. I mean, where do we want to go? さっさと行くぞ We need to move on. Without waiting for a reply, she turned and started toward one of the exits. I followed. Where, where are we going, Fi? I guess you lead the way. Around the garden and over to. to what? The archives. Okay. Fan of the archives. Cool place. Pretty chill. A lot of books. Good stuff. <laughs> the archives. Good place to hide a bomb. Now, where the heck do we start looking? I doubt it really, here. It really matters. If it's here, we'll find it eventually. I'm not sure if that's a comment on how effective their searching skills are or a comment on the intentions of whoever's placing the bombs. Is the person who's placing the bomb planting them in such a way that they're intended to be discovered and easily seen once they're planted? And that's the rationale for the bomb being placed there. Not necessarily leth like a, the lethality of the bomb, but for the implications for the group of the discovery of the bomb. So, what about that Jupiter stuff? We can talk while we look. Now, get started. Ooh, this music comes on. Now you know we're about to get real deep. I turned to a corner of the room and began to look while Fi spoke. I'll start with the conclusion I've come to. Our consciousnesses seem to be able to jump through time. No, sorry, through time isn't really accurate. It's more like we move through worlds. Worlds? Yes. I don't mean physical planets in this case. I'm talking about a whole different universe, really. Parallel worlds. What? Do you know about the many worlds interpretation? I'm vaguely familiar with this. It's basically the idea that there's an infinite number of universes based on, I mean, I guess every different possibility for every moment of, of the universe, right? So, like, something like that? Well, kind of. I think I've heard of it once or twice. Hmm. Oh well. I'll just explain it. <laughs> Back to Fi's classroom. Let's say. Hmm. I don't care what it is, but could you move? Uh. Scratch your head, cross your arms, put your hands on your hips, anything. I had no idea what this was supposed to explain, but I did as she'd asked. We are going to applaud. Interesting. You clapped your hands, right? But you could have chosen to cheer or blow a kiss, right? Blow a kiss? I wouldn't do. The details don't matter. Just talking about possibilities here. Now, maybe there are other sigmas in other worlds who did all of those things. 
All of these worlds and realities are branching off from one another. The choices you could have made branched off from the moment you decided what you were going to do just now. Every moment you make a decision, another universe branches off. On and on into infinity. And oh boy, off to infinity does it go. Very fast. <laughs> That's actually a really cool visual in the background. Each of those branches is an alternate world. A world where a version of you did something different. This is actually a really cool concept. I don't encounter it too frequently, but it showed up in Corpse Party, for those of you that have seen that Let's Play. And as well as an anime that came out, what's almost like 10 years ago, I think, at this point. In my opinion, one of the anime of the past decade. That's uh, Steins Gate. Those of you who have seen it, it's, it's a real gem. Haven't you ever thought about what life would have been like if you'd made different choices? What if you'd gone to this high school instead of that one? What if you hadn't started a study group? What if you hadn't told that girl that you liked her? Yeah, I feel like everybody wonders about these things to a certain extent. What if? What if? What if? But are those what ifs really just what ifs? Or are there other worlds out there where you did those things? Anyway, that's the many worlds interpretation in a nutshell. I've simplified it a lot. Thanks, Vi. Appreciate the lesson. It doesn't have to be human actions, though. I just use your actions to make the explanation easier to grasp. The actions of a cat, the flight of a bee, the movement of a microorganism, even fluctuations in air temperature, all these things can change history. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second here. I'll let microorganisms slide, but there's no way that air is conscious of anything. Well, does, does something have to be conscious to alter history? Right? If there's even just a probability that something could be one thing versus another thing, each of those individual probabilities and in their you know, respective results could be a branching point. It doesn't have to be a conscious decision by any means. Can you say for sure that you are? What? All your actions are caused by the cells in your brain. If we go down a little further, then you could say all of your actions are the result of atoms or electrons or smaller particles we haven't even discovered yet. Are those atoms and electrons still you making a decision? Interesting question, right? At what level of organization do we really become ourselves? And at what point does, well, the ability to make a decision, does consciousness evolve, right? Or emerge. At that level, how different are you from the air? I'd say not much. Human existence is just one part of a reality. Falling in love is like a tulip blossoming. A tulip blossoming is like a tornado forming in South America. See what I'm saying? A little bit of... I don't know, this is pretty odd choices, but sure. The only thing that really matters is the action of the most elementary particles of matter.
That's where history happens. That's where universes branch out. Okay, that's fair. I'll take that. Oi. Hey, you stopped. Are you done with that shelf? Oh, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> well, keep looking while I talk. How familiar are you with quantum physics? Never mind, don't answer that. So we're getting another lesson from Phi. And would you listen to this music? This music... Even deeper we go into learning about something intrinsic to the universe from our, our wonderful educator, Phi. I don't know a ton about quantum physics. I you know, took my physics classes in, in high school and college, but it's been a long time since I visited them. But what I do think is pretty interesting is we've already read about Schrodinger's cat, and we are seeing some parallels, right? And if I had to guess where Phi is going to go with this quantum physics lesson is that you can argue that each consciousness in a given timeline or world is really a an existence with, I don't know, multiple states, right? That are the sum, but also not necessarily one entity, right? Of, of this collection of consciousnesses from that person, that collection of atoms or whatever it may be, uh, from across all these different timelines. So is the Sigma right now really just a sum of all the states of sigmas across multiple timelines, and that's what enables sigma to tap into those timelines events. However, the question would be, why only sigma and why only phi, right? We know that this structure somewhat exists from the morphogenetic field from 999, but why are they the only ones working with it right now? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. And why would the other people not be, you know, those similar states, right? I guess I'm trying to think of it like like Schrodinger's cat, right? You don't really know what it is until you open and confirm, so up until that point you confirm, do you consider it some sort of a state of duality, where it's both alive and dead, or like half alive and half dead? You don't really know until you see it. And I guess there's some similarity with regards to Ally and Betray, uh, for those decisions in the Nonary game thus far and arguably for the characters across timelines. But I'm not 100% sure, and so I, for one, will definitely be learning from Phi as well. But, of course, we're going to be doing that in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. A lot of talking. I'm shocked with how long this timeline is going. I was expecting a, okay, we stop Phi, and then we get another game over for whatever reason. Or we try to stop Phi with one thing we think we can use, and then fail to do so, and it's a game over. But this ending seems to be going on a lot further than I had actually anticipated. So it's pretty exciting. It would be pretty meta and pretty cool if the flowchart deceived you, making you think one timeline was going to be particularly short, there was only so many events that come after this branch point, yada yada yada, but then it actually turns out to be something completely different, much more expansive than you thought. That would be really cool. But anyways, until the next episode, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete. Thank <laughs> you.